Welcome back for another chapter of Sri Nisargadatta Maharaja's I Am That. And today we will be looking at chapter 53. And here we go. <laughs> Share a screen. Chapter 53. Desires fulfilled breed more desires. There's never an end to the desires. If you want one thing, then you want another thing, and then another thing, and another thing. I must confess I came today in a rebellious mood. I got a raw deal at the airline's office. When faced with such situations, everything seems doubtful. Everything seems useless. Nisargadatta Maharaj says, this is a very useful mood. Doubting all, refusing all, unwilling to learn through another. It is the fruit of your long sadhana. After all, one does not study forever. Enough of it. It took me nowhere. Don't say nowhere. It took you where you are now. It is again the child and its tantrums. I have not moved an inch from where I was. You began as a child and you will end as a child. Whatever you have acquired in the meantime, you must lose and start at the beginning. But the child kicks. When it is unhappy or denied anything, it kicks. <laughs> Let it kick. Let the child kick. Just look at the kicking. Watch the kicking. And if you are too afraid of the society to kick convincingly, look at that too. I know it is a painful business, but there is no remedy except one. The search for remedies must cease. If you are angry or in pain, separate yourself from anger and pain and watch them. Externalization is the first step to liberation. Step away and look. The physical events will go on happening, but by themselves they have no importance. It is the mind alone that matters. Whatever happens, you cannot kick and scream in an airline office or in a bank. Society does not allow it. If you do not like their ways or are not prepared to endure them, don't fly or carry money. <laughs> walk. And if you cannot walk, don't travel. If you deal with society, you must accept its ways, for its ways are your ways. Your needs and demands have created them. Your needs and your demands have created society. Your desires are so complex and contradictory. No wonder the society you create is also complex and contradictory. Sometimes it's very helpful to see that, that our desires are so complex and contradictory. I want this, but I don't want that. And even though I want this, it's going to rule out this and da, 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 da. So if we can just see the mind, watch the mind, watch desires and fears, and try to simplify your life so that there isn't so much complexity and so things aren't so contradictory. Make your pathway smooth and straightforward. I do see and admit that the outer chaos is merely a reflection of my own inner disharmony. But what is the remedy? Don't seek remedies. Sometimes one is in a state of grace and life is happy and harmonious. But such a state does not last. The mood changes and all goes wrong. That's because states of consciousness also come and go, appear and disappear. 
So realization is not about achieving a certain state because all states come and go. It's about realizing the stateless state, that which does not come, that which does not go, that which is eternal. If you could only keep quiet, clear of memories of the past and expectations of the future, you would be able to discern the beautiful pattern of events. The beautiful pattern of events. It is your restlessness that causes chaos. For full three hours that I spent in the airline office, I was practicing patience and forbearance. It did not speed up matters. At least it did not slow them down, as your kicking would have surely done. When we fight with what is, when we argue with reality, we suffer and we often add gasoline to the fire. Things escalate and become even worse. You want immediate results. We do not dispense magic here. This is not magical thinking where you create your reality and you are in charge and, you know, magic tricks and things like that. That's not this. Everybody does the same mistake, refusing the means, but wanting the ends. Refusing the means, but wanting the ends. You want peace and harmony in the world, but refuse to have them in yourself. So first you must have peace and harmony inside before you can have peace and harmony outside. If you have it inside, peace, love, and harmony inside, then they will naturally, of course, be outside because you will be creating them in your society. Follow my advice implicitly and you will not be disappointed. I cannot solve your problem by mere words. You have to act on what I told you and persevere. It is not the right advice that liberates, but the action based on it. Just like a doctor, after giving the patient an injection, tells him, now keep quiet, do nothing more, just keep quiet. I am telling you, you have got your injection. Now keep quiet, just keep quiet. You have nothing else to do. You have nothing else to do. This is not Nisargadatta telling you to shut up or something like that. No, he's telling you ah, the injection has happened. You have received the words, the teaching, the transmission. Now just relax and abide in the silence and allow the medicine to do its work. My guru did the same. He would tell me something and then said, now keep quiet. Don't go on ruminating all the time, just thinking and thinking and thinking. Stop. Be silent. Don't overthink. In this process, you don't need to think. We're not focusing on more concepts and ideas and thoughts. We're simply resting and abiding as awareness presence, being, aliveness, spirit, call it what you will, resting in the heart as the heart. All that needs doing can be done in peace and silence. There is no need to get upset. There's literally no need to get upset. It rarely helps. Sometimes a little push is needed and it happens, but mostly everything can be done in peace and silence. If you try to keep quiet, all will come. The work, the strength for work, the energy for work, the right motive. Must you know everything beforehand? <laughs> Don't be anxious about your future. Be quiet now. Be quiet now, take care of now, and all will fall into place. The unexpected is bound to happen, while the anticipated 
may never come. Life will always be a surprise. Even if you are a clairvoyant psychic, you cannot see exactly how the future will unfold. It will always be a surprise. Don't tell me you cannot control your nature. You need not control it. Throw it overboard. Have no nature to fight or to submit to. No experience will hurt you, provided you don't make it into a habit. Of the entire universe, you are the subtle cause. All is because you are. Grasp this point firmly and deeply and dwell on it repeatedly. To realize this as absolutely true is liberation. Now, Nisargadatta wasn't speaking to people. He may not have even been speaking to the mind as much as he was speaking to the absolute supreme reality which is inside of you, which is you. So when he says of the entire universe, you are the subtle cause, he's speaking to you, the absolute supreme reality. You, the divine. You, the Parabrahman. And he's asking for that bit of you, let's say, to come forth, to awaken, to come alive. Where is the absolute supreme reality in you? Where is this alert, alive awareness? Where is the presence of being in you? Come out now, awaken. It's what you are, so it can't be far away. Nature is neither pleasant nor painful. It is all intelligence and beauty. Nature is neither pleasant nor painful. It is all intelligence and beauty. Pain and pleasure are only in the mind. Change your scale of values and all will change. Pleasure and pain are mere disturbances in the senses, of the senses. Treat pain and pleasure equally, have equanimity, and there will be only bliss. And the world is what you make it. By all means, make it happy. Only contentment can make you happy. Desires fulfilled will breed even more desires. Keeping away from all desires and contentment in what comes by itself is a very fruitful state, a precondition to the state of fullness. Don't distrust its apparent sterility and emptiness. Believe me, it is the satisfaction of desires that breeds misery. Freedom from desires is bliss. Freedom from desires is bliss. What you need will come to you if you do not ask for what you do not need. Yet only few people reach this state of complete dispassion and detachment. It is a very high state, the very threshold of liberation. God, let us pray together, shall we? God, Give me only what I need. Don't give me what I want. Give me only what I need. Don't give me what I want. And allow me to see clearly as you see. Allow me to feel as you feel and think as you think. Allow me to be as you are. Take these desires and fears, God, and melt them in your divine love. Take the pleasure and the pain and allow them to melt in your divine love. Equanimity, open to whatever, realizing that God is this and 
this and this. God is what is. God is in everything and everything is in God. God is the totality of consciousness, the totality, 100% of consciousness. God is all and all is God. Seeing this, realizing this, resting in this as this. Ah, wholeness and contentment. No longer pushing or pulling, no longer struggling with life, no longer fighting with the mind. Peace. Peace and unfathomable silence. Everything becomes loving and lovable. Affectionate awareness. And a heart full of gratitude for what is. Thank you, Nisargadatta Maharaj. Thanks, everybody. See you again for another chapter. Namaste.